Hello gin lovers and welcome back to No Nonsense Gin Reviews with me, Bobby Freeman. Now then, slightly different video for you today because one of my subscribers, my old mate Eric Ball, has been in touch and he said, how would I make my perfect G&T, i.e. ice, lemon, etc. Now, when it comes to ice, I would always usually have ice in a G&T. I think it'd be mad not to. I don't do it in these videos because I don't want to water it down at all because by the time I've talked and fanned it around a bit, the ice would probably melt. However, the point about the garnish, I think, is a very good one. So I thought we'd have a look today into what types of garnish that are available and what I think you should use in the perfect G and T. So as you can see, I've got five pre-poured G and T's here, and I didn't know which gin to use for this. It's always a difficult one when I'm doing these sort of videos where I'm not actually reviewing the gin. And I thought to myself, do I go for the beef eater? But I thought, you know what? They never get back to me. I contact them, reach out to them, see if they want to get involved in the channel or say anything or sort of retweet stuff I put on Twitter, and they never ever get back to me. So I thought, Sodom, I will go with my good old friend, the Sipsmith, because Sipsmiths have always been involved in my channel. They've always applied to my correspondent, and I like them very much. I think they're nice people. So we've gone with the good old Sipsmith, and, and also. So I am aware it's available most places in the world. So here we go, Sipsmiths. So first up is what I would say is traditionally the most popular garnish. This is what gin and tonic always used to come with before everyone sort of uh, before this gin boom happened and everyone's uh, sort of taste became a little more discerning. And that is the good old lemon. In case you're wondering what a lemon looks like, that's one there. And um, I would say straight away, let's just pop it in there so I'm not just holding a lemon. I would say straight away with garnish. I think it's more, I, I think the garnish should be more to do with the aroma, the scent that you get just before you take a little sip, rather than the taste. P people can disagree with me, sure, but I think, because um, often you'll, you'll find uh, the bartender will actually squeeze uh, the lemon or whatever it is into the gin and tonic. Now, I think that shouldn't be done because these distillers have taken a long, long time, put a lot of thought and a lot of effort into making that gin taste the way it does. Uh, so I don't think there's any point in squeezing something extra in there because you're not going to you're going to make it something different. That's just my opinion anyway. You might differ. Please uh, feel free to argue with me and disagree in the section below. But that's what I think. So I generally never squeeze it into the uh, gin and tonic. I think it's more about the aroma and particularly with the lemon. I think it gives it. It does give it a certain freshness, a sort of a, a citrusiness, which kind of lends itself to most gins, I would say. I love a little bit of... Yeah, it doesn't hugely affect the taste, but I, I love the way it just sort of gives a bit of a, a sort of a citrusy freshness to the gin, just before, uh, the, the, with the, in terms of aroma, just before you drink it. And again, try and pick the garnish, I would say, uh, to correspond to the botanicals that are in the gin. So for example, I've got the Malfi, uh, con, uh, the, 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 what's it called? Con Limon, Con Limon, the, the lemon flavored gin up there. Obviously, I would stick it in there. But no, again, no point squeezing it in because it's already gonna have lemon flavor already. And in fact, two gins are long from it. I don't know if that's out of shot. You got the Sipsmith lemon as well. Again, obviously you would garnish that with lemon. So that's my view on the good old lemon. Now then, next up is probably what I would say is the most popular uh, garnish of the moment, and that is the lime. Now, for some strange reason, the lemons always seem to get cut into a slice like that. Lime seems to be preferred to cut in just like the quarter. Is that a quarter? It's about a quarter. It's not actually it's a bit less than a quarter, but that sort of shape, if you know what I mean. I don't know why. I don't know why. And then again, you will often find the sneaky bartenders squeezing a bit in. Tell them stop it, order a new gin if they do it. I don't like it and it should be stamped out immediately. Anyway, pop the old fella in there. Again, it's it's very it's gonna be a similar sort of uh, sensation to the lemon, but with a bit bit more of a sort of a I, I see it's even more of a sharpness, isn't it? It's slightly more intense with the lime, I would say. And I would take either of these any day of the week. I don't mind at all, pop them in there. Usually they'd be sitting on top of the ice, which I prefer uh, because as, as again, as I say, I prefer the uh, the aroma uh, of the garnish rather than the actual taste of the garnish. But if you so wish, feel free to squeeze it in there to your heart's content. So those two were fairly sort of similar, the lemon and lime. They're in the kind of the same category. Next up is my old friend, the orange, as they say in France. Um, now, you don't often see this in a gin and tonic, but personally, I think this is great, particularly as many, many gins uh, list uh, or use orange peel in their botanicals. I think that kind of brings it out. And you very often see it in a slice like this, in, in uh, um, sort of a bit similar to the traditional lemon way. Uh, pop them in there, shall we? 
Well, what I would prefer if I'm gonna have orange in my uh, gin is just, just get the skin or the rind, uh, I think you say in some parts of the world. And what I like to do here, just cut a strip of it like that, look. give it a bit of a, a twist like this, like so, like that. You got a lovely little twizzle, like a little corkscrew of orange. I think that looks a bit more, you can't really see it in there at the moment, but when it's sat on top of the ice, I think that looks a bit more uh, aesthetically pleasing than just the great big wodge. Uh, a wodge or a wedge? What's the difference between a wodge and a wedge? I think a wodge is probably a slightly bigger version of wedge. Anyway, rather than the big ugly wodge in there, uh, if you will. Now then, here's something interesting. I, the first time I ever had orange in a gin was in a bar in Barcelona. Now, I before that, that was quite early on in my gin journey, but I got served a, a, a gin called Citadel Gin, which I don't think I've got anymore. I've drunk it all, but I, I reviewed it very early on in this channel. Go and check it out. Now then, that is distilled with orange and cinnamon in there. So the very, very clever and astute bartender served me a drink. Before that, I think I'd only had it served with lemon, maybe a bit of lime before that. Yeah, just lemon or lime. He came out and he served it with a great big, I think it was a wedge of orange and a cinnamon stick in there. I was like, what is this? Are you mad? And he says, no, 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 no. I, actually, I don't know if it was French or not. Uh, I can't really do a Spanish accent. I'll do a French. No, 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 sir. You must try it because it brings out the cinnamon and the orange in there. I was like, okay, fair enough. I'll give it a go. I was like, whoa, hold the phone, shut the front door. It, it just added so much to the uh, enjoyment of the gin and I loved it. In fact, for a while I bought a load of cinnamon sticks and was using that quite a lot at home. But again, as I say, it was that orange and cinnamon aroma, which was quite powerful as well, which hit me just as you take your final breath before you uh, uh, sort of drink the gin. And it was brilliant, it worked so well. And that's what really sort of sparked me off into thinking uh, maybe the guy should be more about the aromas than the actual tasting. So there we go. And even straight away, it, it really fills the glass, even more so than these ones. But it's less sharp, obviously, than these two because they're very sort of a, a sharp, tart sort of uh, taste. Orange is a bit softer and more palatable. And I just think it lends itself to gin and tonic very, very well. Now then, we come to the garnishes which are a little more off-piece now. I've got two more for you today. Uh, and the first one I'm going to show you is this. Now, what is that, you may ask? Well, no, you probably don't because you probably it's pretty obvious what it is. It is a grapefruit. Now, I, everyone is different, you know. This is all subjective, but I don't like... Oh, God, it's dripping a little bit. Ugh, I don't like grapefruit. I don't think it's nice. I don't like the taste. I don't like the smell. And also, it freaks me out a little bit to look at. This sort of deep redness. It looks like an orange from the outside. You cut into it, you're like, Jesus, it looks ill or something. Like it's, it's caught some disease. Now, as I said, some people will love it. And what we had a grapefruit, where is it? Ah, yes, yes. This was, wasn't this grapefruit? Pink grapefruit, um, uh, Whitley Neal, I reviewed the other day. And I wasn't a big fan of that because obviously it tastes quite a lot of grapefruit. And also, talk, I'll talk about the difference in a wedge and a wodge of orange. What the hell is that? If, uh, that's a, that's a, a, I can't think of what would be bigger than a wodge. A wudge, a great big thundering wudge of, um, of grapefruit there. I'll pop that in there. Look at it. Great, big, heavy, ugly thing. I don't think, well, maybe I could have, you could say I could have cut it smaller, but I don't know, it seems to invite you to do that. And I have been served uh, uh, grapefruit like that, very, very similar to that, in a bar before. It, in a grapefruit, um, uh, uh, a grapefruit gin and tonic, a uh, grapefruit flavored gin. And it, to me, it was just very overpowering and I didn't really like it. Perhaps you could do the uh, peeling the rind or the skin like I did before. Maybe that would make it a little less pungent, but generally speaking, I wouldn't enjoy that. If, if you like grapefruit, then go for your bloody life, because I'm sure you'll love it, but I don't think that's working very well with the gin and tonic. Now then, last but by very means least, in my opinion, is a, a garnish that seems to be uh, sort of garnering a lot of support and gaining momentum in the gym world at the moment. And that, my friends, this is another one. I say this to the last because I do not like it. If you've watched my previous videos, I think I'm sure I've alluded to this before. It is this little specimen. Now, this, as you can probably tell, is a cucumber. And I, Bobby Freeman, do not like the cucumber. Je déteste le cucumber, as they say in France. Um, I, this has become very popular, particularly in, I don't think I've got Hendrix anymore, I think I give it away. Uh, particularly in Hendrix, because they use cucumber in the distilling process. And in many others, you'll find a cucumber slipped in there rather surreptitiously. And to me, this 
is madness. This way, madness lies. I don't know how it is sort of uh, weaseled its way into the garnish sector because it should be fruits. Fruits should be garnishing the gin and tonic. Thus, thus, this little fellow is a, an imposter because he is a vegetable. And I don't know how everyone, uh, I don't know how anyone hasn't gone, hang on a minute, what's this fellow doing in the garnish section? It's a bloody vegetable. You might as well drop a carrot or a cauliflower or a, I mean, I don't know, an aubergine in there. But, and, but uh, again, this is subjective because many people will disagree with me. And I think they have done it in, in previous videos. They posted on there saying, no, they like the cucumber. Well, oh, Christ, I just, I find it, it, it really, to me, it jars against uh, the, the taste and the sensations of a gin and tonic. Some people like it, they find it fresh and pleasant, you know, on a summer's day. I think, indeed, I think Fever Tree, who I, who, who I always use as my tonic, they've actually got a, a, a cucumber flavoured tonic now. And I just, I can't think of anything worse. Again, please feel free to disagree with me. I'm, I'm always open to people disagreeing and, and saying when I do, uh, pointing out when I say things wrong, which I in, invariably do very, very regularly. But I'd be interested to see, oh God, I'd be interested to find out the consensus amongst my uh, very wise and uh, well-read uh, learned subscribers to see what you guys think. Because personally, I think this is crazy. But if you disagree with me, please let me know and we'll try and build up a consensus. And, and, and in fact, if it turns out that most people don't like the cucumber, then I think we should do something about it. I don't know what, I could write to my MP or something, I don't know, but whatever it is, we, we shall take the streets and ban this monstrosity from our gin and tonics. Now, of course, you could say to me, there is a veritable plethora of other garnishes on the market. And, and, and obviously there is, but I, you know, I, I've only got so long for this video. And I thought these seem to be the major, the core five that are getting used at the moment. So I thought I'd feature them. Um, and uh, just to give you an idea of what's out there and what I think. If I had to choose a winner, I think it's pretty obvious uh, what it would be. It would be the orange. I find it's just, I could sniff that all day and it just kind of really, it really enhances, the, that's the thing, you should just, it should just be enhancing, a garnish should be enhancing the gin and tonic. It shouldn't be dominating or um, sort of muddying the flavors, if you ask me. I think that it just gives you a lovely, it sort of fires the senses, the nasal senses, just before you get into the actual meat of the gin and tonic. I think it works very, very well. But would it work for all gins? Probably not, probably not, but majority of them, and certainly something which I would call like a core gin, no nonsense gin, with, which is like your Sipsmith, I think it works very, very well. And, and especially if, as I say, if it's got orange in the distilling process. So if you ask me, I would go for the orange every time. But of course, some people would like the others, some people would like grapefruit, uh, lemon, lime, cucumber, as I say before, let's get something going, let's find out what the most popular, in, in fact, if you found like a weird and wonderful one that works really well, do let me know, maybe I could feature that in an upcoming video, because I'm that sort of guy. So guys, that's it for today. Thanks very much for Eric Ball for getting in touch. He's one of my trusty subscribers who knows what he's talking about. And um, if anyone else has any ideas about new videos, please, please, please do what Eric did. Write a comment in the section below and let me know and I will endeavor to make that happen for you. And of course, as always, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video and press the little bell symbol so you don't miss any more of the videos. And I shall see you all next time on No Nonsense Gin Reviews where I will continue to be Bobby Freeman. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah.